Good morning and welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. My name is Ronnie Peters and I've been attending this church for 12 years now, which is a little bit unbelievable and pretty cool. Our weekly worship is where we connect, share information, and inspiration. To begin, let's acknowledge this geographical place where we are currently located, the home and traditional lands of the Tonkawa and Payaya peoples of the Kawila Tekken Band, original and indigenous stewards of this land. On that land is now located San Antonio, Texas, claimed as part of the United States of, um, of America. At our church, we believe and act in a universal love that binds us in mutual care and affection, especially in our work for justice for all and our planet. Our faith is all-inclusive, and all means all. If you are new to us or visiting for the first time today, we welcome you to sign in on the chat stream and fill out a visitor's card. We are very happy that you're here. We sincerely hope that you will join us for coffee hour after the service so that we may get to know you. Wherever you are on your life's journey, we hope you will find your place with us. Want to a song right now? Sure. Okay, repeat after me. I'm a you, you, I'm a you, you. I'm gonna reach up high. I'm gonna reach up high. I'm gonna dig down deep where all the meanings lie. I'm gonna dig down deep. Where all the meanings lie. I'm a you, you. I'm a you, you. I'm gonna reach out wide. I'm gonna reach out wide. And embrace the whole wide world. And embrace the whole wide world. Okay, you got it? Yep, yes. Okay, let's do it this time. And do it all together. Okay. I'm, I'm a you, you. I'm gonna, gonna reach up high. Gonna dig down deep where all the meanings lie. I'm a you, you. I'm gonna reach out wide. I'm gonna embrace the whole wide world. Once upon a time, there was a little child. One morning, their parents took them to a church. They went into a room where there was something called a religious education class. The teacher was very nice, and the child felt comfortable right away. There was a colorful object on the table where the children were gathered around. The teacher told the class that this was a chalice, and each week, one child would get to light the chalice. The child returned every Sunday and loved when it was time to light the chalice. Years passed, and the child got too old for the preschool class, so they went into a class with bigger, older kids. And in this class, they lit a chalice, but this time it was a real chalice, and they lit it with real fire. The teachers of that class told the children never to use the lighter except when the teachers were there and it was time to light the chalice, and no one ever did. Sometimes the child would be asked to light the chalice in the big worship service. The worship service was in a place called a sanctuary, and there was a big, beautiful chalice there. It was always very exciting to light the chalice for the whole congregation. When the child was a teenager, they and some other teens from their church would sometimes go to other Unitarian Universalist churches and meet other UU teens. They would get to know each other and have fun and worship together. And guess what? Whatever other church they went to, they always lit a chalice. And whenever the chalice was lit, the teenager knew that no matter where they were, they were in their spiritual home. When the child grew all the way up, they got a job far away on the other side of the country. Or maybe it was even Canada. It was sad to leave their home and their church, but it was exciting too. And when our person got to their new home, they found a Unitarian Universalist church just a few miles from their new house. And when they went to the new church that first morning, they knew just what they'd see, a beautiful chalice up in the front near the minister. I'm Shannon Paramore. I'm Sienna Paramore. I'm Marina Paramore. Our family has been members of the church since 2008. I volunteer in children's religious education and as a playground monitor. Sienna enjoys arts and crafts and piano. Marina enjoys singing, dancing, making art, and 
caterpillars, butterflies, and snails, and cats. And flowers. We light this chalice for our children and youth and for us, celebrating the flame of faith lit in each of us, honoring the light each of us bring into the world, rejoicing in the community we create together. We are called as Unitarian Universalists to build the beloved community where we are all welcome as blessings and the human family lives in forgiveness and grace, whole and reconciled. We know that this aim takes work, so we are committed to live and behave as a community in covenant. Let's recite our covenant that articulates our values and binds us together in community. The words can be found on your screen. El amor es la doctrina de esta iglesia. Su sacramento es la búsqueda de la verdad. Y su oración es el servicio. Convivir en paz. Buscar sabiduría en libertad. Dar a la humanidad nuestro servicio fraternal para que todas las almas crezcan en armonía con la divinidad. Así pactamos el uno con el otro. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. Why do I have to learn this? Have you ever asked yourself that question, maybe because of something you had to learn at school or at work, or maybe even in a religious education class? Well, today I'm going to tell you a story that says a little bit about the things that we learn. So once upon a time, there was a group of travelers, and they stopped to make camp one night, being very tired from their day's journey. And all of a sudden, they saw in the sky a bright light and they were very excited. They stared up into the light in the sky because they knew that a miraculous light like this was probably going to bring an equally miraculous message. And indeed, as they looked up into the light, a voice came out of the light and it said to them, tomorrow as you're traveling, pick up rocks as you go along and put them in bags or put them in whatever you have. And at the end of the evening, you will find that you are very happy and maybe a little sad. And then the light disappeared. Well, the people were kind of disappointed because they had expected that a miraculous light like that would give them an equally miraculous message, like how to bring world peace or how to bring health to the entire planet. And instead, it had told them to do something that seemed to them a little menial, which was just to pick up rocks as they went along their way the next day. But the light had been pretty impressive. So the next day as they walked along, they did pick up the occasional rock and put it in the bags that they had. So at the end of the evening, they had a few pretty good little rocks in the bag. But when they stopped to make camp the next night and they pulled out the bag, they thought, oh, it's a little heavy and what's with rocks anyway? Why do we even need rocks? I think we'll just uh, pour them out. But when they went to pour out the rocks, they discovered that the rocks had all transformed into very valuable and beautiful jewels. And then the travelers understood what the light had meant when it said that they would be very happy and a little sad because they were very happy that they had these wonderful valuable jewels that they didn't have before they were a little sad that they hadn't picked up more so what does this tell us about the things that we learn well sometimes the things we learn don't seem very valuable or interesting or attractive to us at the time, but later in life, you might find out that they are some of the most valuable things that we have, is that knowledge. And so, I hope that you will continue to learn in your life, 
and you will have a future blessed with great riches. The 2021 church year was a year of great change. We suffered loss and we sought to maintain community in the midst of unprecedented challenges. Yet through it all, we managed to learn and grow and have some fun along the way. For part of the year, the church was a very lonely place. The only creatures about were the occasional staff member and our stuffies who boldly watched over the church campus. The stuffies kept themselves busy. Even without their human friends around, they continued to celebrate our usual holidays like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Advent, Christmas, and Passover. They even helped with the YouTube worship story time, acting out the biblical story of the loaves and fishes. While the physical campus was watched over by the stuffies, children, youth, and adults kept the church, which is not the same thing as the buildings and grounds, alive and active. We learned, shared stories, played games, welcomed guest speakers, and created arts and crafts. Some people were able to participate at home by wrapping gifts for the annual Christmas gift collection project or by helping on site. Finally, as winter came to South Texas, there seemed to be some magic in the air as families started returning to campus, one family or pod at a time for scavenger hunts, gift exchanges, and lots of other activities. As winter came to a close, the stuffies rejoiced as the families and children returned in safe numbers to begin celebrations and classes outdoors. With hope in our hearts, we look to the future to bring us back to the joyful community, both in person and by using technology to bring youth religious education at First UU to all of our children and youth. As a way for us to connect as a community, you are invited to share a joyful event, a sorrow or a concern by entering it on the chat stream. Please let us know what is in your heart. For ours is a welcoming community where we find connection, a spiritual community where we come fully alive. Ours is a sharing community where our joys are amplified and a caring community where our sorrows are heard and held in compassion. At this time of uncertainty, may we listen more deeply and grow more involved and connected with each other.
hold in our hearts all joys and sorrows, both the shared and the unshared. Good morning. I'm Glenda Costick, Assistant Director of Religious Education here at First UU. And I wanted to talk a little bit about our Youth Religious Education Program. Um, this year on Zoom, um, Faith and I were mainly with the pre-K room uh, doing story hour. Um, the rest of the time, K through five, was having classes. Um, Jeanette and Nicole did spirit play. And then um, there were curriculum classes. And middle school and high school had Paula Pepsworth and Nancy Pridgen. But four Sundays in K through five were for Deborah Loya and Sherry, and they did social action Sundays where they taught the children about the different nonprofit organizations around town. They taught them about Black Lives Matter, RISIS, the American Indian Movement, the Anti-Defamation League, Morgan's Wonderland, and Tang. And this year at Easter, we had an egg hunt and we did things a little differently. We had vases out and the kids' eggs had also little scraps of paper in them that had dollar amounts on them. And they were able to take those dollar amounts and put them in the vases of the organizations they wanted to support. They raised over $800 for these different organizations. And um, the kids are gonna tell you a little bit about these organizations. So I thank you for being here today. Shalom. Black Lives Matter was founded after a black man was killed by police. They worked, they worked to help make black people safe from violence. Black people matter because everyone should be treated equally because they are a person not by their skin color. In our social action class, we learned about the American Indian Movement. They work to gain rights for tribes and to make the U.S. government keep its promises to them. I think this is important because everyone should have a voice in their own lives. And I think the government should keep its promises. I'd like to tell you about a group called the Anti-Defamation League. This organization works to stop hatred and prejudice against Jewish people. The ATL is important because it fights all forms of hate. They recently put out a statement about how police have been targeting black, brown, and indigenous people for centuries, so it's a harder problem to fix now. Getting justice and fair treatment for everyone means changing racist systems and the laws, practices, and institutions that have come from them. You can read more about the ADL at www.adl.org. The Easter's is a nonprofit here in San Antonio that helps people who want to come and live in the United States. Our church and our Easter's are both a part of welcoming people on their journey. We believe that everybody deserves a safe place to live. And also, it was fun giving to Raices during the egg hunt. Morgan's Wonderland is a nonprofit that has made a place here in San Antonio where everyone can go and have fun, even if they use a wheelchair or have trouble using other playgrounds and swim parks. My cousin who needs to use a wheelchair has gone there many times for free and has so much fun. I went there for a birthday party and had a blast. I'm glad my family donated to Morgan's Wonderland. 
Hi, I'm Jeanette Henderson, and I teach spirit play along with Nicole Manessis. Typically, this class is our first UU class for children in grades kinder and first. However, during our year of quarantine, we held class once monthly and opened our story time up to all children in grades K through five. We were able to include some practice and co-regulation using breathing shapes and other tools. In spirit play, we light our chalice and sing songs. We also read stories that illustrate each of our UU principles. Our stories are also pulled from the sources of our UU principles and our faith, helping children understand that we didn't just make up the principles, but we developed them from the ideas of others. Each story is followed by a time of wondering, during which we invite the children to think about the story and make connections to their own life and our UU church community. If you're new to our congregation and have a child in kinder or first great age range, have them come play and explore with us. All the world is about how families connect and um, how other people are kind to each other and um, peace and kindness and love. And all the world has surprises and fun things, and the whole world is like a garden bed. My mother and my father are trying to grow a garden in our backyard, and nature is like leaves and sticks and trees growing all around you with those leaves and its branches and the apples maybe and oranges and all sorts of things but nature has surprises and activities bye church without its people. We are this church. We are all it means inside these walls and all it stands for out in the world. We dedicate these gifts to the church we embody with our hands and our hearts. Daddy is a hand. 
handsome devil He's got a chain generosity and love help our church and our world become more peaceful, caring, fair, and free. What a year it has been. A year ago this month, we were just getting used to virtual meetings and video presentations. Now, the phrase Zoom fatigue is everyday vocabulary for many of us. A year ago, none of us had any idea how this pandemic thing would play out. Now, we may be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Unitarian Universalists have a saying that revelation is not sealed. This means that we don't have one book or one set of doctrines that we believe to be uniquely true and unchanging. We believe that truth, with a capital T, comes in many forms and may be accessed in many ways. In addition to the seven principles, you use recognize six sources of continuing revelation. Recognizing multiple sources of continuing revelation, or to put it more simply of learning, means that we also recognize lots of different kinds of teachers. The first people I think about when I think about teachers at First Year San Antonio are those whom we officially call teachers. Every year around this time, we honor the religious education class leaders of First Year San Antonio, and we do so today as well. As you saw in our slideshow, during the COVID year, we have gotten by with a pretty small crew of steady, Zoom-hardy volunteers and staff to facilitate our online classes and meetings. I am wildly grateful for their dedication and flexibility. Some weren't sure what this Zoom thing was before they had to hop on it. And consider our nursery attendants, Farah and Alex, willingly and ungrudgingly embracing a new role as attendants on our air conditioned playground, now that we can't care for children indoors. Today, I also want to honor other teachers at First Year San Antonio. Let's start with the parents and guardians, whom I will refer to simply as parents. The pandemic has been hard on everyone, but parents are first in my thoughts when I think about people who teach us what it means to embrace a solemn responsibility and to act with and through love. Parents are always teachers. And this year, parents found their role as teacher expand. Non-homeschoolers became homeschoolers overnight. In my interactions with parents, both in person and virtually, I have observed fatigue, self-doubt, frustration, and more fatigue. I have also witnessed resilience, fortitude, and joy. From parents, I have learned about facing unforeseen challenges with grace. Another set of teachers this year has been the church leaders who are not currently facing the challenges of parenting. They have shown unwavering support and advocacy for children and parents and for the needs of the religious education staff who serve children and families. And now there is a final teacher that I would like to recognize, if not thank. Who among us has not learned something from COVID-19? These may have been unwanted lessons, but lessons they have been. Some of the lessons have been simple. COVID helped me learn things I might not have otherwise have learned, like how to play online games and do interactive puzzles online, how to create and manage Zoom room, and what a jam board is. In forcing us to explore the possibilities of online interaction, the pandemic has nudged us towards a more inclusive community characterized by multi-platform programming. By the way, I also learned the phrase multi-platform within the past few months. Moving forward, 
there will continue to be ways for people to stay involved, even if they can't come to campus. Some lessons have been more profound. COVID has reminded us that we are indeed connected. We are all truly a part of an interdependent web of existence, as our seventh principle says. With COVID, we've seen that this interconnectedness can be scary. Look how fast this deadly disease spread across the globe. Actions here affect actions far away, and actions far away affect what happens close to home. I think there's an upside to this lesson as well. If a disease can spread so quickly, such that it, within months it affected every human being in the world and some non-human animals as well, isn't it easy to believe that kindness, caring, and responsibility can spread just as fast and as far? Finally, COVID, COVID has taught me or forced me to learn some things about trauma. We have experienced collective trauma. Every individual has experienced it differently and to greater or lesser extents, but few of us have escaped it. Have you heard the phrase COVID brain? So many of my friends and colleagues tell me that their mind just doesn't seem as sharp as it did before. This is a symptom of fatigue, stress, and trauma. This means we need to be especially gentle with one another. Now more than ever, we need to understand that every person's struggle is unique. And let's keep in mind the children and youth who've experienced these hard times in ways that we adults may never comprehend. Sometimes people experiencing trauma, feeling a loss of control, will cope by trying to exert greater control over their environment. They may become less tolerant of imperfection. And yet, this is the very time when we need to embrace imperfection. As we move out of COVID life and into a new normal, imperfection will be inevitable. We might as well enjoy it. We also need to be kind and tolerant with ourselves. In coming months, I or another church leader may approach you to do something like maybe teach religious education or serve on a committee. I hope you will seriously consider these opportunities and I hope you will embrace as needed the holy sacred no. Please do all that you can in service of the church, but please do only what you can. Finally, I've also learned that trauma doesn't go away when the trigger is gone. And in communities, the after effects of trauma may last even longer than it does for individuals. So buckle in. We will need to be kind and tolerant and gentle with one another for a long time. In the story you heard earlier in the service, travelers discovered that common ordinary rocks had been transformed into jewels. This is of course a metaphor for how unwanted lessons may prove to be the most valuable. Some of the lessons of COVID are indeed gems. Now, sometimes when something bad happens and then someone talks about learning a valuable lesson from the bad experience, it might sound like they're saying that the bad thing wasn't really so bad or was really a good thing or that we should be mad or sad about it. I think we can acknowledge the lessons of COVID while still planning to burn it in effigy at the earliest opportunity. As teachers go, I much prefer a Jeanette Henderson or a Ruth Castillo or an Esperanza Garza or any of the other teachers we acknowledge today. As for COVID, let's take its lessons and send it on its way. Blessed be, amen. Good morning and welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. My name is Lonnie Beggs. We joined the church at the end of last year. We really like all the friendly and accepting people here. I'd like to end with words by Unitarian minister, William Ellery Channing. The great end in religious instruction is to not stamp our minds upon the young, but to stir up their own. Not to make them see with our eyes, but look inquiringly and steadily with their own. Not to give them a definite amount of knowledge, but to inspire a fervent love of truth. Not to form an outward regularity, but to touch inward springs. May you have peace and blessings. <laughs>